How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel showing off The Tower by Benoit Peters and Francois Chuiten, published by IDW and retailing for $20 US. This is a black and white comic mostly. I'll get to that in a bit. It is very oversized. I'll show you compared to a normal trade paperback. There is the full size. So a lot bigger. Uh, has nice French flaps on the inside, so overall I think it is definitely worth $20 for you to get this book. I don't know if it's out of print. I haven't checked. I know a lot of books from the Obscure Cities series this, that this is a part of uh, are out of print. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I think that's the only way to really get these books is to buy them either digitally or probably for a markup. They are, at least this one, this is the first I've read from these creators in this series. Um, they're worth it. This has been an awesome book that um, the story and the art really lingered with me. It's been probably two weeks since I finished the book, and I decided to still make a video about it because I'm still thinking about not just the book itself, but um, the ideas that popped in my head when I read it. So before I get too deep, I'm not going to be spoiling much. I'll give a couple spoiler warnings as I go through some things. I'm just going to be generally talking about the rough overview of the plot and then uh, the art more in depth and why I really like um, Francois Chuitain and why I think he's a just a beautiful, beautiful draftsman. Um, mostly what I want to talk about with this book is black and white comics because I've had uh, friends who don't really read comics. They've read some comics. They liked them, but they're not like comic um, readers normally as a, as a normal form of media that they consume uh, just turned off generally by black and white comics and I've seen people online kind of say the same thing and there is a reason why covers are always in color because it, it pulls the eye it pops more it makes you want to grab the thing and read it it's more uh, easily consumed that way I think and it draws you in and that's probably why a lot of comics are in full color uh, nowadays especially and I think that does make sense. And when I got into comics for the first time, I, I had no interest in black and white comics. I really didn't care for them. I didn't think that they had anything to do with... Um, I didn't think there was any separation between full-color comics and black and white comics other than the absence of color. Like, that was the only difference. And now, as I mature as a reader, I think that there's a lot of differences to be seen in the art and the storytelling in different ways that creators go about telling stories with or without color. Uh, having trouble spitting that one out, but generally the story, I'm not going to talk about it much, but there is a gigantic tower. It is pretty much our main character's entire world is within this tower. He is a maintainer. His name is Giovanni Battista. The opening chapter, each chapter has a kind of single panel excerpt that tells you where Giovanni Battista, maintainer by trade, realizes he has eaten too many eggs. Um, Giovanni is a maintainer. It is his job to kind of patrol his sector, keep it up to date, keep it standing, basically. Make sure it's st structurally sound. There's probably dozens, maybe hundreds, we're not told, of maintainers around this tower that live inside the tower, completely isolated from each other. And it's their job to maintain this tower. And if one of them d doesn't do their job, then the whole thing could come down. So they take their jobs very seriously. Uh, it's been probably 20 or 30 years since Giovanni has even been outside the tower. We're not told if he ever has, really. Um, and the inspector and the other maintainers have stopped kind of communicating. He hasn't seen the inspector. He used to come uh, through with routine visits. Um, so he's been very isolated for a long time. Getting kind of fed up, although he still does take his job very seriously. He's getting kind of fed up um, with this isolation. And light spoiler, he eventually does leave his sector to explore the tower. There's a lot of um, journeying in the book and things take turns and it's a very diverse plot, I will say. There's multiple styles. The setting and the character design varies from medieval at the beginning to kind of a renaissance kind of feel in the middle to maybe like a Napoleonic or something. I'm not great with history. Something in that area kind of setting towards the end. Uh, but mainly, I want to talk about the art. So I want you to just notice, obviously, you'll notice immediately how many lines are on the page. It's very dense. The, the, the amount of lines in every single panel is ridiculous. Uh, Francois Chuitain puts 
more lines in a single panel than other artists put in their entire page or maybe their entire book. Um, it's it's stupid how many lines are in this art. Uh, but I do want to say I don't think if this was a fully colored book that you would have this. There is no reason for a fully colored book to have this many lines because the color is providing depth, it's providing texture, it's providing shadows, all these things uh, that without color you have to use line work to to kind of visually describe those things uh the, the book is very architecturally like um centered there's a lot like as you can tell uh, i think the reason that they i don't know anything for cer for certain about this book i've done zero research into the background of this book but i know they've done uh other books in this series in color and I think the reason they probably chose to do this one in black and white is because it's so geometric and so involved with architecture and everything's just completely straight lines and just so metered out that I think it would be muddied and I think it'd be a little washed out if you colored it. I don't think that the impact of these lines would be as strong if there was color on top. I really don't. And as a light spoiler, skip 20 seconds if you don't want to hear anything about the ending of the book. There is color later in the book, and you can tell the difference that Shui Ten does not employ as many lines in the colored sections as he does in this section. It's a very, very different style. And I think that's really interesting that they would knowingly go into the book with a style entirely different from the standard. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It is um, probably some of the most intricate line work I've ever seen in comics. It's puts people that I would say are in, in like Lynn Claire intensely detailed, so clear, but so intricate. It puts them to shame. I mean, this is ridiculous how supremely detailed and fine his line work is. None of this hatching in the background, the million little lines for hatching. None of that is necessary. If the stone in the background is just brown. That's not that's not necessary. So the reason I really started to enjoy black and white comics is the art's so, so different. And in some ways, like within with Will McPhail's in uh, a book that I love and have spoken on a lot, um, color is a is a device to be employed to set things apart in the story and to know when something really intense is happening. Color is splashed in for the first time, maybe in the book. And that's how, you know, things are going down. And that's what this book does, too, uh, probably 30, 40 years before that. Um, and it's really, really well done, and I really enjoyed it. And I don't think I've read a book with such an abstract plot, but such grounding, detailed artwork. The plot is vague, and it is mysterious, and it is, as I said, abstract, but the, the artwork is so, so grounding. It really, really puts you in the world... You know where everything is. You know how far away things are. You know, um, you know when this pillar is not structurally sound versus when it is, because every stone is carved out for you by Shui Ten. You know when if he's gonna take a step and the step's gonna crack underneath him. You know that's gonna happen because that step had a, a crack in it. Uh, it's really amazing the kind of difference between Peters and Shui Ten here, where the story's so loose and you're, you have a very loose grasp on it. Um, even when the general ideas are pretty grounded and pretty understandable, character motivations, uh, the setting, things like that, those are those are difficult to understand and we're not told a lot about them. But you're just put into that world anyway by Shui Ten, and I think that's just beautiful. Uh, I, I, the story in this book, I'm not going to lie, um, I, I think it's fine, I think it's good. It actually did linger with me. For a long time after I finished the book because it has that European kind of questions unanswered super weird um, not psychedelic but close to it kind of thing where you're just I wouldn't say it's a, a typical European thing it's just that when I read a lot of French novels and things like that um, around that area I just see this kind of storytelling employed a lot so uh, that's why I associate the two but it really did linger with me. I had a lot of questions. I thought about it a lot. I still am thinking about it two weeks later. But the art is phenomenal. I have no problems with the art. Um, I've gone back and looked over it quite a few times already. And I think it's just beautiful.
I'm kind of just complimenting it a lot. Um, I don't have a ton to say other than I wanted to point out some things about the black and white comics because I know it's kind of a weird um, thing with comics is and talked about a lot is sometimes you'll just you'll see a full color cover it draws you and you open the book and this isn't what you want you don't want black and white comics but I think that when people use when people create black and white comics they do it for a purpose even if it's an indie book and say they don't want to afford a colorist they still go into that knowing it's going to be a black and white book and they probably change their art or their storytelling or both to fit that and I think that's super interesting and uh, I really enjoy kind of comparing and contrasting uh, things within the same medium but are very different. Here is a middle of the book color thing. I'm not going to give a spoiler warning for this one, obviously. I already flipped to it. I'm going to flip to one in a moment that I think um, you should probably, if you're interested in this book and the plot of it, uh, skip like two minutes because um, it's really close to the end and I don't want it to spoil anybody. So here is a colored section of the book next to black and white. So this is an in-world painting. Uh, so the sur surrounding area is still in black and white. It's just that this painting is in color. And although there are still a ton of lines, there is not nearly the amount of... There is more lines on the brick work on the side than there are in this painting because they're not necessary. They're just not necessary when you have color doing a lot of the heavy lifting for that. And um, that's just... It puts it into... It's so clear when that kind of thing is happening. And it really shows you um, the difference. And I think it's really cool that that happens in this book. Because normally I'd have to find another book by the same creator that's in color. And then compare the two. Where in this book you can just look at all of it. Also the, work, the, the, the use of ink in this book. I'm not going to talk about much. But it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And I love it. Um, a lot of ink on this page. Which is what reminded me. Um, let's flip to some color. This is going to be towards the end. So... If you want to not be spoiled, skip this. So here we're kind of changing tone a little bit. We're adding some like warm white kind of yellow stuff um, going into the thing. And you can already kind of tell we're using way less ink for one. Um, and line work is, uh, is, is much more thin. Um, there's not nearly the density of the line. Like look at these surfaces here. These would normally be hatched to high heaven. I really think they would like here. Or this shadow here where he's creeping out of the black and white world into this more colorful, we're approaching color. Goes from ridiculously hatched to this. And then even from there, this just, this blew my mind when I flipped the page to this. It was absolutely insane to me um, that this was the same book. Our main character remains in black and white, which is huge when you're trying to, like, gauge the art style it's a really helpful thing um such crazy detail on this but see if i can find a more zoomed in panel so you can see here's one so you notice um while there still is a lot of lines on his face and things the kind of clothing uh fully colored not a lot of lines maybe some shading there on the collar not a lot of lines on the hat um even here just a bunch of the backs of these people. It's all color doing the heavy lifting, not a lot of hatching. If we were to flip back to um, some clothing from the earlier part of the book, ton of lines on the sleeve, lines going down the back, lines around his shoulders. Let's see if I can get to a few more. I think you get my point. Um, Colored art, not only does it not need, who that is just, I'll have to turn it, but it's not going to be perfect, but um, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is a great example. So uh, there is still quite a few lines on the underside of this arch here because it's supposed to be in shadow. Um, but I will say this is supposed to be in the light as well, and it's still hatched up and down ridiculously so, whereas this... Um, is obviously not. So this is just the, the same artist when he knows he's working in black and white or when he knows he's working in color and it really changes his uh, the way he draws. And I think that's super interesting. I think I've hammered this home quite a bit. Um, this book was really awesome to me. I really liked the ideas that it played with and it really opened up a lot of new doors for me thinking about 
um, shading and coloring and all these things that I don't know anything really about, but I'm learning about them. And I hope I didn't just kind of hit the same points over and over again. I wanted to have some evidence for what I was saying. So this went a lot longer than I thought it would. They always do. Uh, thank you a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you soon for the July haul video. Thanks a lot. Peace.